darkness falling, the night was coming through. Justice blinded, freedom dying, our fears were coming true. Wind was raging, ocean crashing, sound of drums were no more. People crying, a nation dying. everyone. Well, welcome to another edition of Eagle Eye, Prophetic Perspectives with Art Lucier and Friends. I am Art Lucier, and that was my song, and that was me singing, in case anyone asks. I know they asked last week. The reason that I put it on there is because when we put a different song, we get flagged on YouTube for copyrights. So I just want to reiterate to YouTube, that's my song, and I give permission. Awesome, you guys. Yeah, I wrote that song six years ago for the journey of freedom about the eagles beginning to arise is what I prophesied in that song. About first peoples, but also about a prophetic mantle and story about, oh, we got a little bit of glitching going on behind me. Don't try, try to ignore it as best we can. Anyway, so listen, <clears throat> I want to do a little bit, even though it's a different person, part two from last week. Last week's Eagle Eye, if you missed it, with Kirk and Cheryl Smith from Eastgate House of Prayer, it was just fantastic. Just talking about, you know, um, well, about a dream about number 24. We are right now stuck with Prime Minister number 23, Justin Trudeau. Eventually, there's going to be Prime Minister number 24. But in it, we just believe that right now is a time of an of the ecclesia arising, the 24 elders. And we just believe there's something special about 12 times 2, number 24. And we're going to uh we're going to uh not only touch base a little bit on that with a different guest today, and we're gonna unpack a little bit of the ecclesia and a prophetic perspective from uh the lens of us to the Canadian firewall, to all you wonderful intercessors out there who are keeping the firewall lit day after day, night after night, 90 weeks in. Thank you for those who take their place on the wall. Remember, the Canadian firewall came to be because the, the fifth and last final installment of Battle for Canada was delayed due to COVID mandates. So on Dominion Day 2020, which is J July 1st, Canada's 153rd birthday, we, by the grace of God, kicked up a 24-7 prayer wall that many of you guys are part of. So, now, the Battle for Canada, as some of you are finding out a bit more about its history and its roots, which led, of course, to the firewall, we feel it's important because there's many new ones coming on during these days and figuring out who we are, watching the reset, 
every Wednesday morning at 7 p.m. 7 a.m., sorry, Pacific Standard Time. 7 p.m., I wish. No, it's 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, by the way, if if anyone, uh, any of you are watching this or on live on my Facebook, if you haven't watched a reset, the reset every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., I encourage you to do so. Now, the battle for, just as the Canadian firewall had its start and the reason that it started and so on and so forth, um, the battle for Canada had its start. And for those who don't know, um, it came about because of some dreams and because of a prophetic word, uh, some dreams for various people. For myself, I had a strong sense of a darkness coming in 153, 2020. And the Lord led us on some national gatherings of how to prepare, sort of. But in this time, a great special guest who's with us today, a very close friend of the Canadian Firewall and Battle for Canada, he was getting a download of the Lord at the same time of it, um, but yet it was very much different. But it led to our paths crossing. And so what I want to do today, I want to bring on a very special guest, a, steering, a member of the steering committee of Battle for Canada, um, and uh, 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 someone who's very connected in with another house of prayer, um, with the International House of Prayer in Kansas City. Uh, yes, our American brother, Dean Briggs. So, Dean, welcome to another edition of Eagle Eye. A little bit different when you saw it. We're in our new office, newer to us. We've been in here now a couple months. And, um, yeah, so Dean Briggs, uh, you... How long? How long you been there in Kansas? How long you been living there? Well, I, I, I've been in Kansas City since '09. Uh, moved up to go on staff at IHOP and ended up uh, life zigged and zagged, and I ended up getting connected to Lou Engel instead. Ended up running with Lou for several years, but still lived in Kansas City. Lou lived in Kansas City at the time. He then moved to Pasadena and is now in Colorado Springs. That's where I am right now. Because Lou and I continue to have a dear and important relationship, and we labor together on special assignments. And so there's a 40-day fast going on right now, which we call the Jesus Fast. Uh, and, and many around the world have joined, and the Canadian uh, Firewall has joined in years past. We've got this fasting sequence between these movements and nations and how you and I are laboring together, Art. There's this great cross-pollination of... Uh, leadership and friendship in the kingdom. And so I'm here uh, for the first 21 days of the fast in Colorado Springs with Lou. And uh, uh, I'm here at the base of Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak is just right over there. Go up 14,000 feet and you're at the summit. And so uh, we're here laboring and believing uh, for God to complete the work that he started. The great author and perfecter of our faith. He's not going to fasten our soul to a dead end dream. And uh, uh, what he is doing in history right now is unprecedented. Uh, what's happening in Canada, the, the connection between America and Canada for the sake of the nations. It's just great to be with you. I hate the border closing. I've been, I, you've been trying to get down here. I've been trying to get up there, but this thing is going to be gone in Jesus name. Uh, I, and I believe it's going to dissolve even this year. And we're going to be, we're, yes, we're not going to be talking by zoom anymore. Yes, sir. Well, you know, truth of the matter is now that we've tied the coast to coast, sea to sea, river to the ends of the earth together with an incredible family in the firewall, um, we're still going to connect through this, but a lot of the people are going to be watching it as we're all together, me, you, right. and a bunch of others. That's all I mean. That's just absolutely. a face-to-face -face thing. Absolutely. We, we need to do it. So listen, you talk about cross-pollination, you talk about friendship. You know, you talk about being with Lou and how you went to Kansas City to get tied in the International House of Prayer. Got tied in more with Lou. But so let's go back just for our some of our newer viewers. We're just going to do a quick snapshot of how you came into this picture. Yeah. Because you're, into, you're in the International House of Prayer. America, here we are in battle for Canada. Right. But somehow you're in here as a general in the Canadian army. Like, it was like, what, like, how, how is this, how did this happen? I get a word 2016, 2017 about a darkness coming, bring it to Stacey Campbell, 
prophetic council. They said, oh, do all the Lord has showed you to do. Do national gatherings. I'm not so convinced, you know, but in October, so in o- that was October. In October of 2017, you get an inspiration, a download from the Lord that yes. you need to go somewhere for a pilgrimage. Right. Uh, yeah. In October 2017, my feet hit the floor. And I had a little bit of context from this from months before. Lou and I wrote a book called The Jesus Fast in 2015, came out in 2016. And part of our inspiration was the cycle of fasting that began 70 years prior. That was 2016, 2015, 16, 17. And 70 years prior, so that's 1945, 46, 47, Franklin Hall in San Diego wrote a book called Atomic Power with God Through Prayer and Fasting. And that little book started to go all over the earth. And people started, especially in the evangelical and Protestant church that hadn't really fasted much uh, throughout history, they started to fast and experiment with 10-day, 21-day, 40-day fasts, and the power of God started to break out. Well, I knew from just doing that book together that one of the most powerful outpourings that came out of that fasting movement was in North Battleford, Canada. When a, a group of young Bible students got a hold of that book from Franklin Hall, Atomic Power with God Through Prayer and Fasting, he wrote it in 45, came out in 46. They got a hold of it in 47. And, and they said the, the grace of fasting rested on us all winter long, started in October of 47. And for a few months, uh, uh, for a few months they, uh, of, of fasting and prayer, they got kicked out of their Bible school because they wouldn't go to their classes they're just giving themselves to fasting and prayer. And, and then in February, February 12th of 1948, the what came to be known as the latter rain outpouring broke out in a little town, probably 3,000 at the time, in the middle of the Saskatchewan prairies, uh, winter time, cold, no good roads, and yet people flocked from all over the world. It was one of the great moves of God in the last 300 years. And uh, people flocked from all over the world, reshaped the church. And so I I wasn't really thinking about that because I'm months past the release of the book. My feet hit the ground in October, 70 years after they started fasting. And the Lord spoke to me out of the blue. I woke up that morning and the Lord said, go to North Battleford and fast and pray for 21 days for a new latter rain outpouring. And I just knew it was the Lord. I mean, that's not something I'm going to think on my own. Uh, Wasn't thinking about it out of the blue. And and I wrestled with the Lord. I didn't want to go. I didn't have 21 days. I didn't want to go, didn't want to go to the prairies of Canada in the middle of winter. Uh, And so I didn't for two or three months. I just sat on it and wrestled with it. But I knew it was the Lord. It haunted me. Finally, in January, I, 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 I looked at my calendar. I couldn't get away from this. And I realized I have three weeks that I don't have anything scheduled and I can do it. And I can't say no if I have those three weeks. So randomly, I just scheduled the three weeks. My intention was to go find a hotel, just hole up, not try to mobilize anything. For me, it was praying for personal revival and for an outpouring of the spirit in Canada that would touch the nations again. Uh, And uh, I'm, I'm flying from Kansas City to Saskatoon, I have a layover in Minneapolis. And the day I'm traveling now, I I hit the ground in Minneapolis and I get a call from a man I've only met once or twice. We're going to stop there. I'm going to catch people up to what you're going to say because I was going to bring this in. I get the word in October of 2017, same time you do, about a darkness coming in 2020 and we got to gather the nation. Wow. I'm not thinking of Battleford. I'm not thinking of anything. I would never choose to gather the nation there. Right. God did in 1948. Great, great God idea. But as far as bringing everyone together for national repentance gatherings, you're thinking a city, not a town of 20,000 people. Yeah. You're thinking, you know. Uh, so, and, and I get this, I get this mandate, go and do these national gatherings. I chicken out or I say it, it shouldn't be me. I give it to a young apostle. I said, you need to do it. Four days later, he has a dream. Four days later, he has this incredible dream, which we have gathered, Rob Parker, Fateen, yourself, myself. Uh, By the way, another American, Chris Mathis, is on here. 
I just see, you know, it's interesting. Kisa walked into the building and found two American pennies at the door. I'm like, hmm, I know there's two Americans who always fight for us. And he's one of them. I know, of course, now he's a pastor in Canada. But uh, you are two of my greatest supporters, I feel, in the battle. And they were Americans. But anyway, so um, I give this, this mandate to John. He has his dream. We've gotten together. It is of the Lord. And the dream was great darkness is coming. Canada is going to tip into darkness unless we gather in the Battlefords for 10 days. I'm like, Battlefords? What the, the North Battleford? I've been there and I don't like it. Just like, and it said in November for 10 days. So this is, this is, he wakes up that morning, emails, you know, ministers around America. Look, I've had this dream. We're going to do this. Uh, Wesley Campbell phones Lou. And Lou knew I was going to North Battleford. And where was, so Lou was on a, a trip and a getaway fasting time. Where was he? Well, not, 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 not yet. He was going. Lou okay. and I had just been in Santa Maria, California, and I had told him I was preparing to go to North Battleford. So then you and I don't know each other yet, Art. No. Never we don't. Yet. We haven't met yet, and part of the joy of this story is just how 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 the Lord sovereignly does what He needs to do, connects people, interfaces, brings things together, the resources we need, the connections we need, the friendships, the 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 common anointings. So the uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Wes and John Steve, you have what? John has a dream and right. you get a call is where we he, he blankets a lot of people. So Wes and Stacy have talked to Lou. Lou knows I'm going. It circles back to John. I've only met John one or two times, but haven't been around him hardly at all. But as I'm on layover in Minneapolis on my way to North Battleford, that's the night he has this dream. Canada's slipping into darkness. There's scales on one side is a right. darkness that will that will cause the nation to go into three or four generations if it doesn't if it doesn't deal with the issues and on the other side gold coins and empty wheelchairs and and the lord tells him what's going to make the difference is 10 days in north battleford right where i'm going so he calls me in minneapolis i say this is amazing I, you know i i realize i i'm not just going for a personal assignment i'm not even just going to pray for a, a, an outpouring I'm, I'm being given a nation to, to shepherd in prayer right now. And it raised the stakes. Uh, and I just, uh, even to this day, Art, I think, what if I hadn't responded to that call? I hit the ground, my feet hit the ground in October 1 of 2017. And I said no for three months. But the Lord kept on me, the hound of heaven. And so uh, I hit the ground in Canada for 21 days of fasting and prayer, just crying out to God. I go to North Battleford, never been there before. Uh, start in Saskatoon. There's a group of believers there with Fred and Michelle Pexa. Just happened to find out. Fred just came on. He just said, hey guys, that's hilarious. You just That's awesome. That. Fred and Michelle yeah. Pexa are there. Love them dearly. They're doing a 21 day water fast. We haven't ever met, but they're doing a 21 day water fast exactly lining up with mine. And so we just joined in this together for the first seven days in Saskatoon because that's where it started with the students before they were kicked out of the Bible college and moved to North Battleford. So I just decided to follow, follow that revival story and, and spent the first week and then went for the last two weeks to North Battleford. And on the way to North Battleford for the very first time, I, um, I'm driving down the highway by myself and I see a sign that is immediately confirming to me, this is an assignment from the Lord. He wants to encourage me. This mission matters. By the way, you were asking, where did Lou go? <laughs> Lou went to fast and pray in Hawaii. <laughs> so I, bless Lou. He got, he got to fast and pray on a Daniel fast in Hawaii with papaya and mango and beach and sun. And Lou's done enough fast. He's, he's earned that fast. But I say this, the Lord loves me more than Lou Engel. Because Lou went to Hawaii and got a mango. I went to Canada and got a nation. And so uh, I fell in love with Canada. You can't pray for something and not fall in love with it. And so I fell in love with this nation. And, and on the way there, just outside of Battleford, this is what happens. All right. Well, we're going to break. Yeah. So about 21 kilometers, 10, 15 miles out from North Battleford, finally arriving today. I'm just pondering and praying what is to come with this fasting movement. 
across Canada that the Lord is releasing across the earth in these days. Franklin Hall's book, Atomic Power with God Through Prayer and Fasting. And as I'm approaching North Battleford, I see this, this plume of, of, of smoke. It's about where Battleford is. I'm not sure exactly, but it's on the highway just as I'm approaching that looks like a small nuclear mushroom cloud. I believe this is a sign for Canada that God is releasing again. This is a sign for Canada. This is hanging over the area of North Battleford. Within just a, a few kilometers, we have the mushroom cloud. That's why I'm coming. It's to fast and pray to release atomic power with God in the battle. That's, that's good enough. That, that gets the point across. Uh, I, uh, uh, I, just, I, I didn't even realize it at the time. I was so dense. But I'm there for 21 days, and the Lord shows me the atomic uh, bomb in the background at the 21 kilometer marker. Didn't even put it together at the time, but the sign of 21 and there's the atomic. And I finally get just outside of North Battleford. I realize where it's coming from and it's called the Battleford Power Center. It, it, it was the power plant and that was the, you know, the plume coming up from it. I grew up by a power plant. They put out columns of steam. I've never seen a nuclear plume form like that. So I get there and I know the Lord is in this and I go, I'll be real quick on this because I know we got other stuff to cover, but this is important. I go uh, to the place where the, the, the students prayed. There's a, there's a caretaker ministry there that has preserved the original facility. So the students, when they relocated, it was an old R, uh, RAF Royal Air Force training center. The British pilots came to train the Canadian bombers and on this second floor in this little room, they had painted clouds and a horizon line. And that's where they had the pilots in their simulators. And, 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 and so that became an orphanage after the war. And the students were permitted to come into the orphanage. And so they prayed through this fasting season. Uh, they prayed in the cloud room. And th that, those clouds are still in the wall. The room is still there. I went to that, that, that caretaker ministry and I said, can I pray in that room? So day one, I'm in that room praying two things, right? I've got, I'm in an upper room. So I'm praying Acts 2. God, release tongues of fire. Release the fire of the Holy Spirit again. And I'm praying for the latter rain. So I'm asking for the early and the latter rain to come like a flood. I'm praying for the fire and the flood. That's the first day I'm in Battleford after seeing the atomic bomb landing there and getting permission to pray in the upper room where the latter rain outpouring happened on February 12th and touched the world. And, and this next thing, this screenshot, the next day, the phones all over the region got this public service announcement on their phones. The, it were two simultaneous alerts, a, a flood warning and a wildfire warning. And, and all the phones got this on their public uh, alert. I, I didn't because mine was an American phone, but I took a screen capture because people were coming to me and showing me their phones. And, and uh, the, the, uh, the media the next day came out and said, that was an error. We're sorry. We don't know what happened in our system. There was no flood warning and there was no fire. And I thought, your stupid phones are prophesying to you, Canada. Your day of visitation is coming. The, 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 the flood and the fire of the spirit is on this nation again. And it was just, it was zeal from the Lord to contend for this. So we did for 21 days and, and we left hearing reports. I, I mean, Art, you and I know a 10 day event in North Battleford is a bad idea. Uh, you don't do it in November. You don't do it for 10 days and you don't do it in a, a, a little podunk city in the middle of nowhere, oppressed by a religious spirit. And right. it was bad all over. And we were bad. hearing, though, the stories of how this was just going to be kind of a carnival, a charismatic carnival. Uh, that's kind of how it was being envisioned at the time. And so we were just laying hold of this. God, this has to be something different. This has to be something different. And it passed from that young apostle's hands into your hands. And we met in July. I flew out. I didn't time it this way, but my 21 days ended on the 12th, February 12th, the day the fire fell. 
on those students. That's the day you guys arrive with your team trying to pick up the scraps of what was quickly kind of falling into disarray. And we only had a few months to figure it out. You called a meeting in July and we got on our faces and said, God, this, this seems impossible, but it also seems like it's you. Yeah. Right after the dream, you know, you're, you're, so you go for 21 days. We've already got a schedule. We're doing an eyes and wings, Vernon, uh, Abbotsford, Texas, an eyes and wings cruise. Remember those days when you're allowed to travel? Anyway, uh, I was leading worship, tough gig, leading worship on a cruise ship. But when we landed, instead of going back to Kelowna, we went from plus 30 weather one day, 24 hours later, we're driving in the middle of the night because our plane was canceled out of Calgary to go to Saskatchewan. We drove all night because we had to be there the next morning yeah. to meet Fateen, Charlie Robinson, and some others right. in uh in north battleford to see if this is god we drove all night we went from plus 30 to minus 30 a 60 degree weather change in 24 hours and, and we're there as, out as you're driving yeah. in yeah you were leaving we're driving in because you flew up and i and i look i'm like is this even lord battleford and i look when did the fire fall february 12th in the morning and we're sitting there 9 a.m february 12th 70 years to the day and listen, Canada, I'm telling you, we're seeing only a trickle right now. But there's a cloud out. There's yeah. an outpouring coming. There is a fire that's coming. We've had the alerts. We've seen a prophetic alert. And I'm just telling you, God has heard. And the answer in the time of darkness is always oil and fire. And I'm telling you, it's coming. Both an outpouring of oil and a, and, and a fire of God is coming. And so, Dean, so we go on. It's February 12th. You go back home. Um, yeah, you know, this mandate that I gave John, he has a dream. Now it's given back to me in April. I'm in desperation. I've never met you. I have to assemble. Yep. Steering committee, we do. You come on board. Um, and we went, actually, it was in June when we all met in Saskatoon. And we went there. Where's there? To the place where the fire fell in Saskatoon. That little Bible college is now the Ramada Inn. And we were there and we had worship. Uh, Nikki Mathis, I meet for the first time, Chris Mathis. They come down, they lead worship for it. Um, Fred and Michelle Pexa are hosting. And we, you know, and we had an incredible time. The rest is history. We went on to North Battleford, not sure if anyone would show up. You know, a thousand people for 10 days. Um, and it's been one heck of a prophetic journey ever since. The nation and responded, Art. It was, yeah. an, it, was, it was a foolish scenario in the natural, but Canada responded. And you say a thousand, but I think it was more like 1,400. People came from all over the country and they stayed for 10 days. And we got on our faces. And I want to say this about you, Art. I want to say it to Canada. Uh, uh, that the, under the, the stewardship of the original dreamer, it was not going to be what it needed to be. And that's not, I'm not trying to slight I'm just saying it was just going to be a normal, big, charismatic explosion event. It probably would have been good, but the stakes were too high. Canada hung in the balance. And when we came together in Saskatoon, uh, I, I don't want you to be romantic about it, man. We got on our faces because we didn't know what to do. We, we didn't have a great plan. We just got on our faces and said, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, this is happening in three months. And we don't even know what what to do or how to do it. And, and, and yet we felt like we had to do it. And Art, you carried it with a faith. You said, if I have to sell my house, if I have to leverage my, my own, this is, this is the word of the Lord, because you had already got born the word of the Lord, the burden, the oracle of the Lord in 2018 about the coming darkness. And I just, I just want to commend how you bought, bought that steering team together and the way they shepherded it with the, with the right sobriety in the spirit for what was required. I love celebration events. I love big equipping gatherings and, and all of that. But this wasn't that. And it could have been, but it needed to be something else. And it became what it needed to be. And I believe it was the beginning of the rescue of Canada. Remember right after our, those, uh, by the way, I just want to welcome those who are just even on Facebook. I'm just watching different friends. 
Aaron uh, Del, Del, uh, I, Clark Dawson, do how I say it. You're the bus driver who took us. We didn't even know Aaron. that house up on the hill. Aaron's here, there. Um, the the uh, the that that the house where they divvied up two thirds of the landmass of Canada. All of the I forget what it's called. And uh, I see Rita Bear Gray with us there, and uh, our First Nations a uh, sister. Grace to you, sister. And um, by the way, speaking about First Peoples and speaking about this, in case we go and we don't say it, listen, Dean, as we know, the last and final battle was delayed, but we believe it's on. We want to tell Canada we're shooting for June 30th through July 3rd. That's what we're shooting for. Yeah. Now, I'm not giving that as a pup, as a thus saith, this is when, you know, because we even back in North Battleford, we say, we said Edmonton, May 1st to the 5th. Well, it turned out to be May 14th right. through the 19th because there was no venues. We're working on it. Please pray for us. We believe there's one more very significant strike before we go into our whole harvest time yeah. um, campaigns of just, and it really is harvest, signs and wonder evangelism, um, um, showdowns in the spirit. So, uh, and this is the home. This is the Forks, home of Louis Riel, and where things fell apart between Canada and the First Peoples and the Métis. Um, but anyway, thank you for that, Dean. Hey, Dean, when we left Saskatoon, did we? Uh, did, were you with us when we went to Batoche, where they took Louis Riel? Yeah, yeah. You were there. Yeah, yeah. You were there, and we went, carried my guitar. We didn't know what to expect. I'm the one that took the cool photo of you. You <laughs> took <Yeah. it. laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, I wish we had a picture of everyone in the dirt. Yeah. Right. Barry and Fatine and others as we led worship. You took the photo. I was looking to the yeah. outside of, of where they took Louis Riel on May 15th, 1885. Him and four chiefs surrendered as they were trying to defend the home, the altar of the Lord, in freedom for Canada. Sounds familiar. Anyway, so Dean, all right. That's a little catch up for Canada. Yeah. Who's Dean Briggs? Why is he part of this? It's of the Lord. Yeah. And, and he's a welcomed American brother into the battle for Canada. And he and I, uh, we are, we are, we feel it's of the Lord to establish an alliance, a revival reformation alliance. Yeah. More coming in time of that. And, and, and it's a, it's a shoulder to shoulder of all kinds of networks, apostles, prophets, evangelists, Pastors, teachers, administrators, intercessors, musicians, worship leaders, saints of God coming together, partnering in a sense of unity for uh, for the commanded blessing of the Lord, but but for for uh, just just for to bring our equity in the spirit together to yeah. see Canada not only get some salvations but a turnaround. Okay, so Dean, you had you were supposed to be on our program last week. Right. Didn't work. No. Kirk Smith came on, but you had said, why don't we get Kirk? So we told the dream of Kirk where he was out of an airport, walked through this long hallway, and he's in a presidential suite. Trudeau's outside, doesn't have the key. Another intercessor of Canada had a dream similar shortly after that of, 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 of a, I forget who it was, a prominent uh, intercessor of Canada had the key, Trudeau didn't have the key, or had the key, it wasn't working. Nonetheless, your book, Ecclesia Rising, which I encourage everyone to read, uh, one of the great books that you wrote, you know, you wanted to chat a little bit about this and the authority of this year, 222, you know, um, you got you and Lou were recently together in 222, so, so were we. Right. Um, you know, if, you, if you've got not too much to say just about Kirk's dream or about that, well, maybe start with that. But even just the key still works. These are the days of keys. Yeah. Bob Jones's word in Toronto, he got up with a broken key. He goes, the key's going to be restored. Listen, and, and, and his, that video was two hours, 22 minutes long, 14 seconds. Bob Jones died on two, 214 of 214. Wow. Like there's all of these clues, you know. And of course, Bob Jones said, the apostolic chiefs are coming forward when? When the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're one of them, you're in Kansas, but there's a football team there in your hometown. Right. And Bob so said, when the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl, know this, that the apostolic chiefs are going to come forward. Right. Ones of authority, so on and so forth. And they won it on 0202 
2024 twos, which is Isaiah 22:22. Key of David, Dean, speak to us. Yeah, yes, yeah. just so much there. It was also uh, Coach Andy Reid's 222nd win. So the Super and, and the Kansas City Chiefs' second win, second uh, um, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, yeah, second. And the coach is 222nd win. What? Yeah, I mean, you, all these things, uh, uh, you know, when the disciples, uh, after Jesus fed the 5,000, and then Jesus rebukes them in the storm for their little faith, and he says, because of their hardness of, the, of heart, uh, in relation to not having learned the lesson of the 5,000, these are moments and invitations for us to soften our heart and not think as materialist, rationalist, uh, atheistic Christians who divorce ourselves from the supernatural and from a God who speaks and to act like uh, practical deists in our faith. All these things, can, they can be dismissed, but they're invitations to believe. When you just stack up this many little things, you get to choose whether to come to the Lord like a child and believe or, or to, uh, to harden your heart and 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 be an outsider watching others believe and 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 uh you know be skeptical and jaded i think we all are on a journey in these ways the lord is making us into believers every day but this 222 storyline is outrageous and i think it, it you know the signature verse there's many but the signature verse is isaiah 22 22 uh, uh replacing the pretender with the true son of david and the sign of that was it wasn't going to be the steward who wasn't really of David's line and was pretending to have an authority he didn't have, but it was going to be the true son of David. And the, the sign was going to be that the key would be given to him that would open doors that no man could shut. And so that 2222, Isaiah 22, 22, is all about keys in the spirit that open doors that no man can shut. And, and Jesus, the true son of David, shows up in Matthew 16. And what does he do? He says, if you recognize who I am as the Christ, the eschatological Lord of history, that was Peter's confession, you are the Christ. Jesus immediately turns around and says, if you know who I am, I'm telling you who you are. You're the one who's going to get my keys. I'm giving you keys of the kingdom. Why? So that we can open and shut, so that we can bind and loose. And, and so we've just been on this story of the uh, of, of 222. Uh, another quick story I'll give, even that's brought us here to Colorado Springs. When Lou was in uh, uh, Pasadena, uh, he had started in Pasadena uh, in a war room underneath Mott Auditorium. Mott Auditorium was on the campus of the Nazarene uh, Prayer and Revival Center. Uh, uh, Mott Auditorium was their big missions center. And, and they built it through the depression on the prayer of faith. There weren't materials. Uh, there was a scarcity of materials. And so the Nazarene elders and, and, and brethren would come together and they would pray the prayer of faith and God would release a stack of lumber. They would pray and the nails would show up. And so Mott Auditorium was built wall by wall, brick by brick on the prayer of faith. Well, Lou ended up there many years later after the Nazarene had moved. And in the basement, there was a prayer room there called the War Room, big map of the world, praying for the ending of abortion, praying for revival in America. And, uh, uh, and Lou moved away and went to Fort Mill, where Bob Jones was, went to D.C., standing on the steps of the Supreme Court, eventually came and was with uh, uh, Mike Bickle at the International House of Prayer for about seven years. Well, when I moved to Kansas City to go on staff, I moved there in the same period of time that Lou was there. I didn't know Lou at the time, but I got connected to Lou and, and started working with Lou while he was in Kansas City. So 2012 comes along and Lou is feeling a burden in his heart to move back to Pasadena. So Lou and a team goes to Pasadena to fast and pray to ask God, is the war room and mod auditorium to be given to us again? for the, this next season. So we're there for 40 days. Now I, I'm going to, I'm going to try to just weave this together. These two or three things we go because uh, Chris Berglund, uh, a brother here, who's our most trusted dreamer. He has a dream that this giant warrior angel, uh, this angel looks like a, a giant Mohawk 
uh, uh, native. And he has a dream. The angel's name was, I'll meet you on the mountain. That was the angel's name. I'll meet you on the mountain. And, uh, and he had a key that he was giving Lou. And on the key was written 731. Well, so this is, this is how we do it. We just have simple faith to do the dream. So Lou says 731, that's July 31st. Let's do a 40-day fast, back up to fast for 40 days, believing that God's going to release an angel to give us a word on July 31st. So we go in June, start fasting and praying. Well, before I ever met Lou in, in uh, uh, I think it was 1996 or 1999, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was at this place called Mount Beautiful. It was the most beautiful mountain. No, it was 1995. It was the most beautiful mountain I've ever seen in my life. A uh, uh, giant, probably a 30,000 foot mountain, snow capped, a single mountain, not in a range, rising from the earth, uh, a pillar of, of majesty and blanketed with beautiful flowers all around. And I'm just captivated by this mountain. I call it in the dream. I know it's Mount Beautiful. But at the same time, in that dream, as I'm, uh, as I'm captivated by Mount Beautiful, I'm looking for something that's missing. And I'm looking all around. I'm on this uh, 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 upper area overlooking the mountain. And up here, I'm looking for a key. And I'm looking all over for this key because I know the key goes to the power center. And so I'm looking for the key and I can't find it. But I finally find it. And it's an old skeleton key. And, and the skeleton key, I'm thinking, how could that go to the power center? I don't understand. But the key is also bent. And the dream ends. I'm at Mount Beautiful. I finally find the key to the power center, but I hold it up and it's bent. And the dream ends with me asking the question, does the key still work? Well, I just hold on to that because I'm at Mount Beautiful asking a question about the key and whether it still works. Now I find I meet Lou years later and the angel on the mountain has told us there's a key at 731. So we're fasting and praying in June of 20, uh, uh, 2012 leading up to uh, uh, July 31st. And I go, I've never been to Pasadena. I go and the U.S. Center for World Missions is there. They own Mod Auditorium now. They bought it from the Nazarenes. And they have all of these uh, properties for missionaries on furlough. They uh, uh, put me up in a place called Haggai House. And I go to stay there. And I'm on a street that goes from a mountain and goes right down to Mod Auditorium. And that street is called Sierra Bonita. Now, if you know Spanish, Sierra Bonita is Mount Beautiful. But in English, to read Sierra Bonita in English, it's beautiful mountain. So now we're there. The angel on the mountain has a key to give us. I've had a dream before about Mount Beautiful. I'm now staying at a house called Haggai House. And Haggai, the book was written to encourage the believers to rebuild the house of the Lord. They had fallen asleep in their duty to rebuild the house of the Lord. I'm there on beautiful mountain road leading from the Sierra Mountains right down to Mott Auditorium. We conclude this fast. And on 730 at about 1030 or 11 o'clock at night, Lou gets a, a, a little booklet given to him from the director of the U.S. Center for World Missions. He said, I've been looking for this book for weeks. I could only find one copy he actually found the copy in Kansas City at a Nazarene library. They shipped it to him. And, and so on midnight of 731, Lou starts to read this book. Show it. Do we have a picture of it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to bring it up right now. Okay. On Lou, the angel on the mountain comes on 731. You're going to have to adjust the, the it's called the key works. There it is. And what you see are mountains in the background. That's Mott Auditorium where they prayed the prayer of faith. And that's the key I saw in my dream when I asked a question, does the key still work? Years later, Lou and I's story converges on Mount Beautiful Road leading to, Mount, uh, to, to, to Mott Auditorium, which is about 
uh, uh, the prayer of faith for world missions. And here's the here's the here's the point, Lou. I mean, uh, uh, Art, we carried that 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 war room. A woman here in Colorado Springs converted this garage behind me. She converted this garage because she had been there and and was so gripped by it. She put that map in her uh, house of prayer. We're at the base of a mountain right now. We're at the base of Pikes Peak. And the name of this house of prayer is called The Door. We got the key and we're opening the door. And on 222, we were just standing in faith, believing this is a year of open doors. Things are opening in the spirit like never before. You were contending in Kelowna and in Edmonton. Uh, uh, you all did 21 days of fasting, 22 days of fasting up to 222. Canada's doing it. We had a gathering of dreamers and dreams just for God to release divine intelligence at a new level so that everyone can get a key because the key works. If we get the divine intelligence, he gives us a key. There are doors we are meant to open to release salvation and revival in culture. And there are doors of demons meant to close. That's the message of the ecclesia in Matthew 16. Jesus didn't say he's building a church. He said he's building a government of people who know how to operate with keys to open and close. And we're in the 222 year. So, you know, some of you will know that I've got this big key that was given me and it's got Isaiah 22, 22 on it. And on the other side, Matthew 16, 19, which you just quoted. This Perfect. big key. Now, I, I got given this 20 years ago. I'm like, oh, that's nice. I walk up to Cindy Jacobs. She, she calls me up in 07. I walk up to her. She goes, I got a word for you. I know what she's going to say. This is weird. We quote it together at the same time in front of hundreds of people. Isaiah 22, 22. And she's like, steps back. She goes, oh, um, you've heard this before. I said, well, I just keep getting it. But let me tell you, Dean, never before have I ever felt led to use that key until this year. Yeah. I'm telling you, you're bang on with that. I'm yeah. telling you, these, these 21 months of full-time prayer now that the firewall's been doing all of these wow. prophetic strikes over the years with Lou Engel wow. and the Watchmen and all the different ones are saying, and, and you know, uh, the apostolic chiefs are coming forward on four twos, Isaiah 22, 22. There is an authority now that's being laid upon our shoulders like a mantle. Boom. Cause that's something else that's happening right now. It is now. We have to be careful and partner with the Lord in what we open and what we shut. Wow. Never before have we ever used keys. We use keys. We unlocked all kinds of stuff. I was doing all kinds of prophetic acts with our keys in Calgary, uh, in, in, in Edson on 222. What did you guys do on 222? 222, we had a gathering. Uh, uh, we weren't sure what to do. And a woman in Kansas City had just happened to rent a theater uh, on uh, February 22nd, she just rented it in belief, in faith. Actually, it's a fascinating story. They run an adoption house. Uh, they run an adoption service and they had tried to rent it on 222 the year before to tell the story of adoption in Kansas City. They couldn't, months passed, months passed. She rented it again thinking that they wanted to do it for their local ministry. It couldn't happen. She offers it to Lou. So Lou calls sons and daughters from across America that have been caught up in the dream world. We called it the theater of dreams. And sons and daughters, about four or 500 from all over the country, came together. And we just renewed ourselves in love and covenant and dreams. And we prayed for new keys to be released so that new doors could be opened in the spirit. And Chris Berkland has a dream that what was happening uh, uh, at, at that at that ceremony was uh, he was being shown that uh, 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 it was at Mount he was given a, a glimpse of Mount Sinai and how uh, God said uh, no man can see me and live and he understood that the, in the dream that no man in their uh, Adam nature can see God and live but then God hides at, uh, Moses in the cleft of the rock, which is being a picture of being hidden in Christ. 
and then all of God's glory passes before. So when we're hidden in Christ, we're no longer in our Adam nature. We're in Christ and we see God as he is and the, the riches of God become available to us. And in the dream, he was told that's what 222 was about that day. It was the weos, we, weostensia. I can't remember the Greek word, but it's the ceremony of sonship by which uh, uh, they were adopted as sons. That the ceremony of sonship is how they adopted someone into their family. And it was the process by which someone outside the family came into the full right and privilege. And God told us 222 was the ascension of the sons to receive new keys, new dreams from heaven, and new uh, position in Christ to do the work. It was a glorious day. Wow. Is that word huios? Huios? Is that like the mature yeah. sons of yes. God where it says those who are led by the Spirit of God are the huios? Yes. You know, and such is the time of the ecclesia coming for, forward. People, everyone, what does that mean? It's, it's, the, uh, it's the original uh, meaning of what who we are supposed to be right. as believers. You know, so, uh, so good. So you guys, so, okay, listen, so we, yeah. Canada did this fast, 22 days. For those who did, thank you. It was an amazing time. It was crazy time. It was a hard and exciting fast. Yeah. 22 days. On day 23, it starts a freedom convoy from the West going right to Ottawa, which ignited Revelation 22 to. What's that? <laughs> The leaves will be used for the healing of the nation. Right. No, right. It's so, no, it is. It's so, <laughs> so our, fla our, our flag, not that it's about Canada per se, but let me tell you, Canada being the most prophetic nation in the world, I say that unabasedly because I just look at all the prophetic symbolism, even how we're tied into Israel. We're tied into a time clock. That's why we went by the year 153, 2020 being the year of harvest, which has been delayed. But the, number 153 out of John 21, Jesus, how many fish do you got? You know, you've, we fished all night. Throw your net on the right side of the boat. They catch 153 fish. Number of harvest. But Canada is, of course, the only nation in the world with a leaf on its flag. Right. And now the leaves are being flown throughout the whole world. There's an awakening about freedom. There's an awakening about standing. And about standing up. It's the most ridiculous. Thing. That's Revelation 22 too. So we do this 22 day fast. It looses the leaves to go across Canada. People are streamed for miles on roads and bridges. with all flying the flag, the leaf. And it starts something which we're seeing. Which is going to play in the end times. I know it's happening. And so now you guys are on a 40 day fast. Who knows what's going to happen during this or at the end of this. Yeah, you got our, like your own freedom convoy. You, you, you're so on it right now. I, I just believe, you know, you can you, you you can be accused of presumption or audacity to to simply proclaim things in faith, uh, and 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 yet I believe, of course, there's generations of of righteousness. There's generations of prayer. Uh, what has happened in the last five years is not the beginning of the story. It's the, it's the progression of many, many stories. Toronto in 94, uh, Saskatoon, the revival in 71 and 72, and right. going back and, you know, even further uh, uh, miracles in Edmonton and Calgary and Vancouver and all the things. But I believe something happened when God gave that dream, put a, a, a fasting movement in place, Battles for Canada. I remember going with you on the run to the battles, we went to small towns. We went to big cities all over Canada, just proclaiming there's a moment here that has to be seized. We, we, we turn our hearts in humility and fasting and prayer. Joel, too, just daring to believe the, the possibility that God might intervene. Out of that, the enemy sought to thwart something, but it only caused things to germinate. The battle for Canada was shut down after four instead of five, delayed, not shut down. And instead that turned into uh, 21 months of 24-7 prayer across the nation. Then moving into the 22-year, another fast 
sets the freedom convoy. And now the, the Canadian maple leaf is flying in the nations of the earth. And I just dare to believe that there was something that was put in motion. I remember going across Canada and telling those churches, sing your national anthem. I, mean, I, I believe it should be spell, spelled national anthem, A-N-T-H-Y-M-N. Canada has the most anointed song in their in in their in their hymn book. It's their national anthem. And we would sing that as a prophetic declaration. And lo and behold, something starts to rise up in Canada. And the totalitarian authoritarian spirit coming out of Ottawa is matched by a shield wall of prayer and fasting. And we don't know what's happening in the spirit, but all of a sudden a bunch of truckers get an idea and a freedom convoy starts to roll across the nation. And now Canada is becoming the beacon of hope in the earth. And the, and, 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 and the, the maple leaf is flying everywhere. Uh, uh, my wife said to me the other day, we got to get a Canadian flag and fly it. So, I mean, it's happening. And, and, and now America is following Canada's lead and other nations are following it. And I believe that's in the natural, but it's also in the spirit. This is happening there. And, 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 and honestly, Art, I just think in the closing moments, I just want to encourage. I think we all just have to get, we just have to get used to hunger. <laughs> I mean, the, the end of the story isn't fasting. The end of the story is a feast. There's going to be plenty of time to eat in eternity. The wedding feast of the lamb. He's going to, he's going to make up for all the lost days of hunger. But I believe we're in these rolling seasons Right now, we're in a 40-day fast that's going to culminate. Uh, uh, Chris Reed came to uh, uh, the House of Prayer in Kansas City last year with a riddle. When the prince will pass, it will be 418 at last. He was told that months before, comes to Kansas City, doesn't even realize he's there at, uh, at, uh, at 418 when Prince, uh, uh, Prince Andrew, not Prince Andrew, uh, I can't remember the, 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 the what's the person? He, he passed on, on actually the anniversary of Azusa street, which was April 9th. Right. And, yeah. And, and Chris shows up and he had the, now this is a prophetic conference. He has this months earlier. He comes to you guys and the morning that you guys start this conference. Oh, four nine, the, the anniversary of Azusa. And he says, when the prince shall pass, it shall be four uh, 18 at last. And the prince had passed just that day. That morning. And that morning. And so we know what is 418. It's Luke 418. The spirit of the Lord, Jesus says, coming out of the fast. He comes up out of the 40 day fast <laughs> in the wilderness. <laughs> and in Nazareth, he says, the spirit of the Lord is on me. And the Lord has anointed me to preach good news, proclaim liberty, captive, sit, hide. Heal. It's the miracle ministry of Jesus coming out of the wilderness in the fast. He proclaims it in Luke 4.18. We believe these three years of 40-day fast, 2020, coronavirus hits in the fast. 2021, the, the, the word is the when the prince shall pass at the culmination of the 40-day fast. This year, you're fasting, we're fasting. Russia invades Kiev, and there's all of these climactic global events. I just think we have to move in different dimensions of faith in these rolling seasons of fasting and prayer, we have to learn to take our position in heavenly places, ascend the mount of the Lord, get the keys because the key still works. And we wield that over principalities and powers. We unlock things in the spirit to release the armory of the Lord. And who knows what other freedom convoys, who knows what other movements in the natural, whatever, what, what other uh, militaries will, will collapse and, and, and nations will rise. And the great movement, uh, Israel is returning. There's a whole wave of Aliyah coming out of Russia and Ukraine right now. Because of what's happening, it doesn't justify Putin's move. But God turns even the wrath of man to his praise. And Jews are returning to Israel. We're going at the end of this 40-day fast to Jerusalem. On 418, we're going to celebrate communion together with nations around the world and proclaim the blood of Jesus. These are glorious days. And to be really clear, because Chris Reed said 418 at last, because there's been a delay, there, there has been a delay. Paul Keith Davis, the different Kansas City prophets, he showed it. We're going to have him back to talk about that. 
but there's this, there's this delay because of unbelief and because where we've been. But Paul Cain had the word from his mother. His mother always prophesied into him all yes. his life. And she says, I'll give you the greatest word of your life later at the end of my de- at, at the end of life. But she went into a coma. <laughs> right. Oh, so so Paul Paul Kane, Mike Bickle gets everyone to pray. And she's there. She comes out of a coma. She goes, the word is 418. Uh, stadiums, the spirit of the Lord's going to come down. Like, like it's going to be a Jesus movement, right. part two, through his church. But she dies at 418 in the morning on April 18th at 418. Mike Bickle. Last wait. word she tells him is the last word for your life is 418. And then she dies on 418 at 418. So, and then Chris Reed comes and says it's 418 at last because Prince Philip has passed. Philip, that's what it was. Prince Philip, yeah. And then there's this whole shift in the ecclesia, which Bob Jones prophesied, which is unsettling. It is. Oh, man. It's It's especially in Canada, the nice church, the nice people. I'm sorry about everything. We're all nice and we got our nice pews. Yeah, but Canada's shown what she's made of. That freaking dumb boy showing something. This is what's happened yeah. since Bob Jones's word. There's this been incredible shift and it's causing this groaning and we're shaking off slumber. I'm telling you, this is the most glorious days that we're walking right into it. So what a great time to fast and pray and believe. What a great time to use the keys. Listen, um, I'm going to let you go. We're past our hour. Yeah. I Can we just close in 30 seconds of prayer for keys? You know, you know, okay, then that that let's do that. Then I'm going to address the people. Please pray for us. Yeah. And then I've got something just to close to everyone. But sure. Dean, before you go, and by the way, um, if you're how many days you've been fasting now? I'm on day four or five. We gotta get you back when you're more like on day twenty-eight or thirty-five. <laughs> uh, 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 I might not have any arms because I'll gnaw my arm off. Yeah, great. Okay. So I so, love you, Art. You know I love you. I'm in this way. Yeah. God, I'm yeah. asking across Canada, across the earth, if any others are watching, the nations of the earth with their eyes on Canada, but across the Ecclesia in Canada, I'm asking for a new uh, uh, and profound dispensation of keys, a new release of keys from the mountain of the Lord, the beautiful mountain. It shall be said in the latter days, all the peoples of the earth shall say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. God, we just dare to believe that when we ascend into the high place, when we uh, move in heavenly dimensions, seated in heavenly places with Christ, you release keys. And so, God, I'm asking for the dreamers of dreams. I'm asking for the seers of visions. I'm asking for words of knowledge, words of wisdom. I'm asking for you to resurrect dormant words in people's lives. I'm asking for keys because the key still works. Give us the ability to lay hold. Give us the unction and the the troubling in our spirit, things that we've thrown away, things that we've forgotten, things that we think we've failed at and lost and forsaken. God, you are the God who restores. You are the God who redeems. I'm asking for 2022, a 2222 year of keys being given, faith being released, and doors being opened in people's marriages, their families, in churches, in ecclesias, in provinces across Canada, let her fulfill her great mission as a light and a a city set on the hill to the nations of the earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Dean, we not only thank you for being on this program today, but the reset week after week. Um. We're in your debt. Thank you for encouraging the intercessors, you know, rolling with the spirit of God. So thank you, Dean. Um, Have a great time of drinking water. Yeah. (laughs) It's a feast. Yeah, it's a feast. Awesome, man. Okay. We're going to let you go. So, you know, I was, we've seen some questions on here, including from Olivia. How do we know? How do we use the keys? So um, I'm really excited. Then in one week from today, we're going to do a, our next Eagle Eye program is going to be introducing another program. And I'm going to be having Keisa McDonald on here with us because just like those questions, just like what we've been talking about, these, these prophetic strikes and, you know, um, we need more of that from everyone. Well, you know, every, we, we need more. 
We need more of those. So we're going to be talking about keys. And we're going to be talking about prophetic strikes. We're going to be talking about intercession, what to do, what not to do. And so get ready because there's a new program coming to the Canadian Firewall. And um, we're calling it Arrows and Incense. And we're going to be introducing it, Keith and myself, next week. So for all of those who are just on the wall day after day, thank you for praying this in. Thank you for partnering with the Lord to see the Ecclesia, the ecclesia come forward. Thank you um, for making this firewall, keeping the light burning bright, morning and night, on top of the wall. Thank you to all the intercessors and watchmen. Thank you to all the directors who are helping and all the ones who help, you know, um, uh, help at different hours and you come and you speak in. May the Lord continue to give you the grace and because this wall, we just believe, needs to keep going. It's going to bring in harvest and going to help keep the harvest. So with that, this has been another incredible edition of Eagle Eye Prophetic Perspectives. Thank you for joining us here today. And uh, share this out if you're watching on my Facebook. Just share it out. We'll see you on the reset. We'll see you. And remember, this program is, is, is going to be re-aired Saturday at 5, Sunday at 5 Pacific Standard Time. And um, so until next time, we'll see you guys later. God bless you all. Yeah, thank you for all the comments. Love you guys. Fire of God be on you. And remember, it's revival time. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. I'll close the segment. Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without first revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets, Amos 3, 7. So blessings on you all next time.